Hi friends, very welcome to my Vanitar. I'm the host Hesam Moshiri. In this video, I'm gonna introduce the second version of the hand sanitizer dispenser device. Some time ago, I had published the first version of this device. However, I received some comments from the viewers that requested to have a better device with liquid flow control capability and less sensitivity to the ambient light. So now what you see on the table is my introduced device. Uh, in the first glance, you will see this perfectly laser cut plexiglass or acrylic enclosure. You can see the pieces on the table. This is the main piece, 2 mm black plexiglass. You just need to put all pieces together and fix them using glue or something like that. Now it's the time to show you how this device works. Let me just put my hand under the nozzle and thank you very much. Neither too much nor too little of the liquid. Winne winne chicken dinner. This is exactly what we want. Liquid flow control and no sensitivity to the ambient light. I can say the majority of other dispenser projects use this module. It is not a good choice for this type of projects because it is sensitive to ambient light and you won't have control over an expensive liquid like hand sanitizer. So just forget it and don't use. I should fix the camera focus. Now it's perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is to take apart this device because I wanna show you the board and also how easy you can assemble or disassemble the device. First I should disconnect the power like this and then uh, I'm gonna open the lid to take out the pump and the hose. Okay. Alright, this is enough. Let me show you the board from the bottom. Can you see the board, connectors and bolts? I should open these nuts to take out the board. Let me see if I can open them by hand. Okay, oh, it's too tight. I should use a tool. Uh, this one and this one this one and this one now i can easily open them by hand first one second one third one and the last one and there we go uh, then I just need to open these connectors and the board will take out easily. Okay, this first one. There are three connectors, the second and the last one. And Bob's your uncle, it was as simple as that. Can you see the board? 80 tiny 13 microcontroller and the IR transmitter diode and the IR receiver module. In the next section I will talk about the circuit. Just stay tuned. Alright, this is a PCB layout of the device. Uh, as you see, it is a single layer PCB board and all component packages are through hole. You should not have any difficulty or problem with soldering. This cutout in the PCB board is to separate the IR transmitter and receiver. A piece of enclosure fills this gap and does the job. As usual, I use the Symaxis component libraries for this design also. Uh, I use the libraries for Q1. Q2 and IC1. You have two options to use the Symaxis component libraries in your projects. The first method is to visit the component search engine.com and search for your desired components. Then you can download and import the libraries in your electronic designing CAD software. The second method is to download and install the plugin of your CAD software. Symaxis has provided plugins for all of these electronic designing CAD software. Altium Designer, Allegro, 
Orcat, Eagle, Kikat, Easy ADA, Proteus, and others. You can find the schematic and more details in the article. Just visit the article link in the video description. What's up guys? As I showed you before, this is the first prototype of the design. Actually, it is a working prototype. Just order the PCB for fabrication and have fun. As you see, all components are through hole. Pretty easy to build. If you check the schematic, you will see that I have used an RC filter for U1, I mean R3 and C1. I used this filter intentionally because U1 is sensitive to the supply noise. It is not a simple IR receiver diode, it's a receiver module. Also, as you see, I have connected the output pull-up resistor, I mean R4, to the filter's output. An RC filter is quite useful in many applications, however, its main drawback is that it limits the current. In our case, U1 consumes a little current, so these R and C values are just fine. I will show you the filter's behavior both in simulation and practice. Ok friends, I've selected the LTS Spice which is one of the best software for this purpose. First I add a resistor, then I should go and select a capacitor, then a voltage source, this one, ok. Then I should connect these elements together this one to this then I should add the ground one for here and another one for here make connections alright 100 microfarad for the capacitor and 10 ohm for the resistor and 1 volt should be for AC analysis uh, for the voltage uh, source, a 1 volt AC. Then I should add a simulation profile. So I should go to the menu, simulate menu and last option, select AC analysis, type of sweep, linear, number of point 100 is ok, start frequency 1 hertz and stop frequency uh, no, 1 kilohertz is good. 1 kilohertz. Alright, now we are ready to run the simulator. Place the probe here, and there we go. One of the key parameters of any filter is the cutoff frequency or frequencies. For this purpose, just click here and move the uh, cursor to meet the minus 3 dB on the Y axis. You can check the values in this window also. Uh, as it says, minus 3 dB on the Y axis is in correlation with 159 Hz on the X axis. Let's see what happens in practice. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the test bench. For testing the filter's behavior in practice, we would need a siglent waveform generator and a siglent oscilloscope, which are connected using a USB cable. I have implemented the filter on a piece of prototyping board, I mean this one. Uh, you can see the resistor and the capacitors, input and output pin headers. Now what I'm gonna do is to connect the waveform generator and the oscilloscope to the input and the output. So I should connect the waveform generator to the filter's input uh, like this. Alright. Now I should go and set the oscilloscope. Both probes should be configured identically. Both types 10, uh, AC coupling, bandwidth full, you see that? 
all settings should be all identical. So I uh, connect the channel one probe uh, to the input. Like this. And the ground connection. And channel two probe to the output. Like this, let me connect the ground lid. And there we go. Let me move the camera to the front to show you the oscilloscope screen better, okay? Uh, here is fine. Alright. To enable the boat plot, I should go to the utility menu and go to the next page, second page, and select boat plot. From the config, first we should check that the connection is correct. So it says AWG connected successfully. Uh, come back, set sweep. We know the frequency should be set on the minimum because the filter cutoff is quite low. Do you remember from the simulation? So these values are just fine. Let's go to the next setting, set stimulus. This one is important. As you see, it provides four different options, 50 ohm and others. In our case, it is high Z. Uh, and set channel. As you see, channel one to the input and channel two to the output. So it's fine. Now we are ready to run the boat plot and we will see what will be plotted on the screen. Okay, it started to draw the boat plot. Alright, it looks like the oscilloscope has concluded the boat plot calculations. Uh, do you see these moving points? It says that the oscilloscope tries to recalculate the boat plot again. Uh, so we don't need that, so just uh, stop the process. Stopped. Now I go to display. Not for now. Go to data. Enable the list, then enable the scroll to be, to be able to scroll, scroll down in the list. Okay, 
let me find a minus 3 db point it is here so this says the cutoff frequency of the filter in practice is 112 hertz do you know why tell me in the comments section below now let me go to the display and enable the cursors the cursor and status should be on now let me move the cursor this one and just look at here I will move the cursor cursor till I reach the minus 3 dB point and confirm our reading from the list so minus 3 dB it says 112 Hertz so this is another method of finding the uh, cutoff frequency of the filter using cursors really this is a very cool and useful feature for a 500 box entry level oscilloscope in the next section I will guide you how you can find and purchase original components from the reputable distributors as you know I always recommend you to buy original components for your projects because most of the time your project won't work as expected in the first try and you will try to debug it and find the problems when you are unsure about the components really debugging could be a nightmare so to find and purchase original components just visit the component search engine.com and type the component name here for instance 80 tiny 13 then press enter or the search button and let's see what will show up so this is the search results we are interested in the first one uh, the PU package so let me click on that okay 80 tiny 13 20 PU you can see the schematic symbol PCB footprint and 3d model the price of the components in the mouser and arrow have already provided here so let me just click on the mouser and arrow you can check other distributors by pressing this button uh, before that let me see the component on arrow 1.24 uh, and the mouser this price the component has already selected this is one of the nice features of this search engine let me check other distributors by pressing this button and this is the results arrow digikey very cool uh, avnet funnel rs components future electronics microchip mauser uh, element 14 Uh, I don't know how is the pronunciation of these two Avnet again cheap stop or something like that and NAC really it's a well designed and handy website all provided services are free also the provided component libraries do follow industrial IPC footprint standards Alright, what you see here is my enclosure design in CorelDRAW. So you just need to uh, send this file to a, a laser cutting workshop or company and tell them that you need this on a 2mm uh, black plexiglass or acrylic. Just don't use transparent materials. The matte black plexiglass and plywood are two good choices for this purpose let me show you something this is where the board should be installed using four nuts and bolts and spacers do you remember the cutout at the edge of the PCB board that cutout matches with this cutout in the enclosure and gets filled with this piece of plexiglass so as a result 
you just need to put all of these pieces together and fix them using some glue and then you can uh, mount the enclosure on the hand sanitizer or alcohol container okay friends this is the source code of the microcontroller in the code vision avr compiler let me show it from the top the important point here is this timer zero overflow interrupt service routine these default corner and delay values are just fine with me however you can modify them based on your needs the first case defines the pre-activation delay and the second case defines the pump activation time that actually defines the flow amount of the liquid. These codes are related to the hardware initialization and the while loop generates a square wave for the IR transmitter diode with a frequency of around 36 kHz to 40 kHz. The best frequency would be around 38 to 39 kHz. And finally, this is how this hand sanitizer dispenser device looks like in the dark. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Also, give me a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.